Well, we finally got our hands on one of these. This is the version two MJX HyperGo. It was definitely worth the wait. We have already run it and you're gonna see that in just a second. The first one was okay. It had a few things I didn't like, like a brushed motor and some suspension drawbacks, but this one has solved those issues. But just like we do all our reviews, we're gonna go over what's in the box, highlight a bunch of stuff I like or don't like, and then we'll see what it can handle and what it can do in our own typical fashion. I believe this one is the same minus the body color, but we went with this option because it had the most ground clearance and we do like to do a lot of jumping. They also offer this buggy which is pretty sweet looking but it does have a shorter ground clearance. All metal drivetrain, whole metal duty differentials. Owner's manual and yes we have part numbers and exploded part diagrams. In the box we have our battery, a 2S 25C 1050 milliamp hour, screwdriver, wheel nut wrench, battery charger, controller, and the wheelie bar with the screws for mounting it. Not sure if it's going to need this, but I am going to go ahead and put it on. Here we go. You do not have to remove the bumper to get this wheelie bar on. First look at the car. We have lots of plastic, which is good, but we also have super beefy metal axles and metal where it counts in a lot of other places including adjustable tie rod besides wl toys you almost never see that on smaller cars like this so that is pretty cool to see i don't think the first hypergo model had that the shocks are tuned really well they are certainly oil filled even though their batteries look like this you usually can find a way to fit a standard battery in there so you can either have an extra one or you can run a different size. This is also our first car with a clipless body. So I'm very interested to see how well this is gonna stay on. It has a hook that slides up underneath here. This is the full battery tray. There is a lot of room there. I'm sure there are ways to get some Velcro straps in there if you would like to run a larger battery. I'm kind of happy to see that this doesn't have the little GPS module that the first model had because that's really just like a use it once thing and then you don't really need it anymore. You don't really have to watch your speed every time you're using the car. I'm glad that they put their money elsewhere in this new model. We have a fan for the motor which worked really well for the brushed version. So this one being brushless, I don't imagine we're going to have heat issues at all cooling fins on the esc and a honeycomb design inside the chassis for strength if you know anything about the hbx model brands that a lot of people love especially the 16th scales these are modeled very similar to those they are arguably some of the best cheap rc cars that you can buy i do think that the plastic compound they use in this car is different than the hbx compound but they still seem like they're very flexible so hopefully we won't have any issues the receiver has two speed settings a 70 percent power and a 100 percent power which we're going straight to 100 but we'll do a speed test on both so you know how fast each setting is now it's time to put the battery in the car slap some of my own supply double a batteries into the controller Full throttle had a McDonald's. That wasn't it. <laughs> Full throttle all the time. Oh, yeah, she's lively. There you go. Oh, I hit both ramps. battery came unplugged speed test time 70 percent power right at 20 that says 26.2 let's do it again Ooh, still 26.2 brakes on this thing are super good 26.2 three times in a row getting the exact same speed wow that's pretty consistent oh thanks dude Brakes are awesome. Well, this 
this was a really impressive truck in almost every aspect. And it was fast, it jumps nice, it handles pretty darn well. Good thing I put that wheelie bar on because it definitely needs it. This thing has a ton of power for its size. It took a whole lot of crashes without breaking, even the the body is is good, it never popped off. But you can see that plastic roll cage in there and the body itself all held up beautifully. And also a quick side note, I dropped this battery, it was yesterday, into that bucket of drywall water. This is literally water full of drywall dust. And I kind of just rinsed it off, let it dry out. And the funny thing is, I didn't realize that fell in the water for a good 30 seconds. So it was just sitting there for a good amount of time and uh, it still works fine. I recommend doing that 0%, but it is good to know that this battery, I guess, is waterproof. We have no breakage in the wheelie bar, which is a common breakage point on a lot of other cars. We have nothing broken in any suspension components. The suspension still operates very well. Those insanely thick, beefy axle shafts are not bent or broken. That'd be the last thing I expect to break on this car. I would say that the only problem I really had with this thing was the fact that it bounced a little too much when trying to land jumps and stuff. And the suspension's nice and solid, but maybe, maybe it's a little too solid for this car. I mean, probably not. I'm a believer in a stiff suspension. I think that does help with it not bouncing too much. Why do I think that? Well, here's a slow motion drop from less than two feet in the air and it still bottoms out and that's causing it to bounce too much. Next time we see this thing, we're probably gonna try some different tires on it. I'm sure they're gonna be bigger because I really like putting bigger tires on things. Just because. But also because the bigger the tires are, the higher up these suspension components are gonna be, leaving less of a chance for this to be able to hit the ground. Thus reducing the bounceness coefficient. And if you like what you see so far, we would absolutely love it if you hit the like button for this video and hit the subscribe button if you are a new viewer. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you. Is this model as tough as the HBX models? I don't know yet. Yes, I should be wearing a jacket. Yes, I am very impressed with this thing. Super happy that I got to test it out and to show it to you guys because I really like this one a lot. Hopefully it stays strong, especially in this cold weather. But so far I have no reason to believe that it won't. Oh, one other problem I did have is the battery did unplug on me a few times. It's not very frictiony where the plug goes into it. So it just, uh, I mean, it doesn't feel too bad really, but it did unplug on me probably at least three times. By the way, this bad boy, of course, will be linked down in the description of this video. Just in case you're interested in buying one or just wanna read more about it. And as far as fitting other batteries in here besides this weird stock one that it comes with, this here is one of my favorite small scale batteries. It's got a great run time. It's 35C, 2200, it's 2S. It fits in there, but you can see it's a little bit loose. So if you just put a little bit of foam around it or something, you should be able to run other batteries besides this one. Full throttle all the time. <laughs>